All right, let's go ahead and get started with enabling secret detection in GitLab is part of our getting started with GitLab application security. I'm going to show you this two ways. First, the easy way, and that is just by simply clicking the secret detection doc here. We're going to read through the doc a little bit here. Secret detection. People sometimes accidentally commit secrets like keys or API tokens to Git repositories. Oh, sad face. No good. A sensitive value is pushed to a remote repository like my password. Anyone with access to repository can impersonate the authorized user of the secret for malicious purposes, and most organizations are required to expose secrets to be revoked or replaced to address this risk. Secret detection scans your repository to help prevent your secrets from being exposed. Secret detection scanning works on all text files, regardless of the language or framework used. After you enable secret detection, that's what we're doing here, it scans run a CICD job named secret detection. You can run scans and view secret detection JSON report artifacts in any GitLab tier. With GitLab Ultimate, secret detection results are also processed so that you can see them in the merge request widget, pipeline security widget, and vulnerability report. Use them in an approval workflow. So maybe I do want to save a development password just for development purposes. Review them in the security dashboard and of course automatically respond to leaks in public repositories. So how it works, detected secrets. GitLab maintains a detection rules used in secret detection. You can learn about what we're detecting by clicking on the default rules set. It contains more than 100 patterns. Most secret detection patterns search for specific types of secrets. Many services add prefixes or other structural details to their secrets so that they can be identified if they're leaked. For example, GitLab, with, when you generate a personal access token for API usage and things like that, GitLab adds a GL pat. In other words, GitLab personal access token dash blah, 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 blah prefix to project group and personal access tokens by default. To provide more reliable, high confidence results, secret detection only looks for passwords or other unstructured secrets in specific contexts like URLs. You can add new patterns. So if there's something in our hundreds of patterns that we have that wasn't detected, that you figured out should have been detected, you can add it. We're going to skip over that part. This explains the free premium versus ultimate. Basically the configuring the scanner will work in free and premium, premium and ultimate, along with customizing some of the settings, downloading the report, checking the text for potential secrets, the ultimate or for super duper for pay, the Cadillac or high end tier will allow you to see new findings in the merge request widget. So if you're working on a feature branch and start up a merge request to have that feature branch merged in and the features that I added, uh, accidentally added a password, the ultimate tier will tell me in the merge request, Hey Matt, you added a password or a secret. You should probably resolve this before this gets merged into the master branch. Handy. Some people find that worth paying the ultimate license cost for. It also, the ultimate license cost also has view identified secrets and pipeline security tab allows you to manage vulnerabilities. So again, an enterprise feature, access the security dashboard, again, an enterprise feature and in ultimate and customized secret detection rule sets again in ultimate. <clears throat> We're going to skip over reading all this coverage stuff. We're going to skip over reading all the template stuff and we're going to go right here to enabling secret detection. So. <clears throat> At a minimum, I need a Linux-based GitLab runner with the Docker or Kubernetes executor. I actually have a repository over here on GitLab.com. The shared runners that come with this group's ultimate license include a Docker-based, Linux-based runner. So I am good to go there. Windows runners are not supported for secret detection. We use, they're just too slow and Linux-based Docker or Kubernetes-based scanners are much faster at scanning text. CPU architectures other than AMD 64 are not supported. Again, just mostly for performance. We want you to have a good experience. If you use your own runners, make sure the Docker version is not 1903. See that for details. And of course, the GitLab CI YAML must include a test stage. Good news, when we enable secret detection, it will create a test stage if we don't have one, which my repository here is an empty repository, has nothing more than a readme file in it. There's no code. There's nothing in here. And so there will literally not be a GitLab CI YAML file. In the next video, I will show you how to do this manually the hard way, but we're going to do it the easy way, which is use automatically configured merge request.
This method automatically prepares the merge request with secret detection template included in the GitLab CI YAML file. You then merge the merge request to enable secret detection. This method works best for no existing GitLab CI YAML file. Great, because that's what we've got, or with minimal configuration. If you have a complex GitLab configuration file, it may not be parsed successfully and an error may occur. That is the next video, and that's the complicated hard way. To enable secret detection, we're going to follow these directions. On the left-hand sidebar at the top, click select the Search GitLab to find your project. Good news, I'm already in a project, so I don't need to go find my project. Number two, select Secure Security Configuration. On the left-hand side, this little shield here is the secure. And of course, security configuration is right down here at the bottom. Step three, in the secret detection row, select configure with a merge request. Let's go look for the secret detection row. In fact, it looks like I could literally enable a bunch of different things, but let's see if we can find secret detection. Oh, there it is. Configure with a merge request. So this won't surprise you. This is just going to create a new merge request. I don't want to mark this as a draft. I'm going to take the title of config, configure secret detection in the non-existent GitLab CI YAML, creating this file if it doesn't already exist. There's some a pithy description of configuring secret detection using GitLab managed template. You can add variable overrides according to these docs, whatever. I'm going to assign it to me because who knows, and I'm going to go ahead and create the merge request. This isn't going to surprise you. It's going to be able to be merged. It's going to check. We'll be able to merge this. No problem. And we are ready to merge. I'm going to take the default of deleting this source branch because I'm not going to need the branch afterwards. There's probably no reason to squash the commits. So let's just hit merge. I can actually see on this merge request what's happening. I signed the merge request to myself. I went ahead and just now merged it and mentioned a commit. So if I go back to the code view here and look at my code repository, I will now notice that there's this hidden file called .gitlab-ci.yaml. And if I look in here, there's some comments that we're going to ignore. And all we've done is we've included at the bottom of my .gitlab-ci.yaml this template file. The template file is just simply something from our GitLab security project. You can add this on whatever instance of GitLab you have and it's going to detect secrets in my code base. Now, of course, since this repository has nothing more than a readme file, it's not going to find any kind of secrets, but that's how you configure it. And that's how the easy way it's done. In my next video, we'll show you the hard way how to manually add this to an existing GitLab.ci YAML file. See you on the next video.